probably the most important thing for kids growing up today is the love of embracing change. I mean, the catch for preparing students for the 21st century workforce is how do you get kids that have curiosity and a question disposition? Uh, we've called it in the past the gaming disposition. Is that if you look at the disposition of hardcore gamers, such as World of Warcraft, Mass and Multiplayer Games, the surprising things you found, contrary to what people think, is these kids, first of all, are incredibly bottom line oriented. They want to be measured because they want to see how much they're improving. And in fact, the most common mantra of a real gamer is if I ain't learning, it ain't fun. And how do they constantly keep learning? Is because basically they are embracing change, leveling up, doing high order tasks, or the game itself is changing, or they change the game in terms of the strategies they want to experiment with and so on and so forth. And in fact, if you think of this questing disposition, you end up embracing change, not running from change. Coming from that gaming disposition, I became very intrigued when I landed here in, in Maui. As it turns out, that my neighbor uh, turns out to be a 20-year-old kid, moderately world-famous in the surfing world, uh, named Dusty Payne. And what got interesting to us is that Maui has never produced a world-class champion before. They basically come from Oahu, from the North Shore, and so on and so forth. But all of a sudden, four kids make it big, big time here in Maui. They say, well, what happened? And it turns out that if you kind of meet these kids, they have all come together very much like a guild in the world of Warcraft. And what they do is they compete with each other and they collaborate with each other incredibly intensely. Um, they, they think up a new move, they dash down the hill, they try it out, they take their video cameras with them, uh, they're videoing each other, they dash back up here, they start kind of analyzing what worked, what didn't work, build new ideas, dash down the hill again, try it out. And then what they start doing um, is they start looking at, of course, all the other people surfing around the world, which they get from YouTube and all this kind of stuff. They start picking up new moves like that. That's kind of interesting way that digital media has enhanced the ability of these surfing kids to pick up all kinds of new tricks. And I can actually show you how a particular move now on the surfboard takes about 48 hours to propagate around the world before all the key surfers in the, you know, of the, of the top edge are trying it out themselves, okay? And of course, any time something changes, they're the first to try it out and to appropriate it. So these kids live for picking up something new. They live for trying out something new. And some of this stuff, by the way, is moderately dangerous. <laughs> so, you know, these are high cost mistakes, but the passion that they have to do this is, is really awesome. Well, guess what? The passion that I see um, in, uh, in the world of Warcraft, of the high-end, high performance, is, is, is also awesome. But it doesn't stop there. If you look at the artists, if you look at the musicians, if you look at the dancers, if you look at athletics in general until the extreme end, what you have is kids that are turned on. And when they get really turned on in the right context, there's almost no stopping. Any interest that any kid has, I am sure there's already existing out there a passionate community of interest group or a community of practice that you can uh, up, you know, try to join. And in fact, going back to Gene Lave's classic work in situated learning, maybe the learning has to do with learning how to join. Um, or you learn to join, and once you join, now you marinate in that, uh, and learning isn't something you do consciously, it is something you absorb. And so there's something that, you know, most serious learning often happens through 
an osmosis process that once I indwell in the set of, of the experiences, things are getting integrated in my head, not necessarily consciously, because there's a tremendous amount of tacit knowledge um, that I'm kind of being exposed to in these kind of communities. Um, and I just start to integrate, assimilate, let things gel. Uh, and it's not particularly conscious. What makes these ideas so relevant now is in a world of rapid change, any particular skill that I've learned is apt to have a moderately short shelf life. So what I really need to do is to know, you know, how to create context for myself that I keep scaffolding and learning and accelerating what I know uh, to increase my own performance. And so there's a sense of, of what I'm doing becomes a platform for doing something new, learning something new, and becoming even better, and actually moving potentially into quite a different type of uh, field. So it's kind of like suddenly now I'm looking at trajectories through life space as opposed to fixed points. I think the construct that has been most overlooked now in the 21st century, uh, maybe the 20th century as well, is the power and importance of play. That's to say, how do I take an idea and how do I kind of play with it? How do I tinker with it? How do I come to make it personal? How do I come to own it? How do I indwell in the idea itself? And this plays out, for example, in poetry. How do I find that magic combination of now that phrase or that line in the poem says exactly what I mean deep inside me? Likewise, how do I you know, work with engineering systems and kind of see how things couple together? Uh, how do I do tinker with these devices, Sim things as simple as you know, radios and stuff like that, or microphones on cameras, to kind of really understand what's the way that these systems really work, and how do I kind of learn that by experimenting with the stuff myself? Um, because you've got to learn that not everything works. In fact, most things don't work. And if the first thing that happens when something doesn't work is it frightens you, then you're not going to be very willing to embrace change. But if you realize that when things don't work, which is almost always, you can get in there and figure out how to tinker with these things and just absorb what happens. Very often when you're tinkering, it doesn't make pure logic sense. It's something you begin to feel in your hands as much as your mind. Tinkering brings thought and action together in some very powerful, magical ways.